Welcome back to Portsea Beach for the Uncle Toby Super Series. We are in the middle of an epic day of surf and of course the women's race, France, is something we've never really seen conditions like that before. Oh, it was incredible stuff out there today and some of those girls were really scared. Talking to them after the race, they were just shattered, trying their hardest to get out through the surf and they just couldn't get out. Nearly half of them didn't make it around the course. It was just oh, an incredible finale to the series. Yeah. But we do know, of course, that Reen Corbett has won the Uncle Toby Super Series women's title. Now it's on to the men's and of course it is enduro. Quite an interesting race coming up but first of all let's talk about this surf. You've been here, you've raced here, we know it's big but it's also very nasty. Yeah, it is. I mean, the power Portsea has is the change that a lot of the competitors aren't used to. Not many carnivals are in Victoria in surf life saving anymore, and when you come here, the shock is, is quite amazing. It's relentless. As the series goes, we've got Kai Hurst, Wes Berg, uh, Stephen King and Joshua Blair, who could all win it today. You've been picking uh, pretty well throughout the year. How do you pick a winner in these conditions? Well, it is all going to depend on who gets out in the ski well. But if I think if, if Kai Hurst actually gets out in the ski well, the board and swim are easier to get out on. They're still very, very difficult, but easier. I think he can walk away with the title today. All right, let's see if Kai Hurst can do it. If he does do it, he will become only the first man since Trevor Hendy to win three Uncle Toby Super Series titles consecutively. So Kai Hurst did it back in round four. That's where he really kicked on at Manly Beach. Let's take a look at the round four highlights. The final is underway. Five guys are left. Remember, we started the day with 19. They should have been paddling as they come down the face of the wave. Crunch time. Oh, trouble. Stairs. That's exactly what happened. That's Crunch time. Crunch time. needs to straighten his skin up and try to get back down this white water here, which he hasn't done. He's fallen off the back. Look at this. He is going to be forged into, into the first place and move way in front of the other guys. He's cutting across this wave. Kai <laughs> Hurst is having an absolute fall out there. He's forgotten about racing and taken on surfing for the afternoon. He's been dominant for so long. Now he's back, well and truly back, in the title race. Yeah, he certainly is. I'll give you no clues as to who this is, checking out the surf here at Portsea Beach. Now, we know what Kai Hurst can do in the water. We know what he can do in the surf. What else does Kai Hurst get up to? Let's take a look. Hi, Kai. When Kai Hurst takes a nippers clinic on the beach, the scene tends to resemble something from the Pied Piper. But while the 19-year-old Queenslander is used to the adoration of fans, he's full of admiration for these youngsters. To see the smile on the kids' faces, to, to watch them, you know, just run around, and half of those kids have just got such an awesome talent that they, you know, I don't think they realise they have, and they, if they just keep going out there and having fun and training, they're definitely going to be you know, awesome competitors later on in life. On the day before a race, Kai can often be found tucked away in his hotel room, testing his metal against the best that his PlayStation can throw at him. It's a good way to relax, but he still likes to win. Oh, you won! Yes! <laughs> Why not? When I'm not on the beach training and, and warming up for the races, well, I'm normally back here sleeping and, uh, you know, playing on my, my uh, PlayStation. With race victories at Pulungong and Manly taking Kai back into series contention, he's relishing the prospect of the final race. We've got a couple of races left and I'm definitely looking forward to the end of the season and uh, you know, it's one of those things when it when it draws near and, and you look you always look forward to the last race and the last ones at Portsea. So, you know, we're hoping for a really big wave and um, you know, I, I really would like to finish with a high. And let's see if he can finish with a high. It would be a monumental task to win here today, but he can certainly win the overall series because Portsea Beach is vicious and nasty today. Head to head, one versus three. Hurst, the 19 year old from Tugan in Queensland. Joshua Blair, 23 from Swansea, Belmont in New South Wales. Joshua Blair yet to win a title series, but of course Kai Hurst has. And he spoke to Clint Robinson down on the beach today. Well, Kai, it must be two sort of feelings for you today. You're a little bit more relaxed. You're leading the series with a decent margin, yeah. but today could bring up anything for you. Oh, definitely. You know, you just got to look at it, and, and the girls with that gutsy to even have a go at it. And, um, you know, it's going to be definitely testing for us guys, and, and especially come to the ski in the last leg if we do get to that leg. And, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely going to test a lot of us. Well, Josh, the final round of the series, round five, it's turned out some huge surf. How do you feel? Yeah, obviously at the moment it's uh, it's going to be a tough day, but I think it's left the series wide open now, so there's no need to hold back for me. I'm, I'm in fourth position, so there's nothing to lose at the moment. Well, it all shapes up for a terrific final race. These are the series points after four rounds of the Uncle Toby's 
Kai Hurst out there with 74. Wes Berg, Stephen King and Joshua Blair all with a shot of claiming the series from Kai Hurst. Luke Richmond, Shannon Eckstein, Andrew Moselle, Cowdery and Tyag, all of those guys, just like the women, are fighting for a top 10 spot. Right now, you're looking at a bunch of guys that would be very, very nervous. They're relaxed at the moment, but deep down, I'm sure they know that by the time they get out into the water, which isn't too far away, there's going to be mayhem and madness. The swell has come right up, so the tide is coming right up towards the beach. Wesberg closest to us, and the guy is starting with the run leg. And of course, Guy Leach joins us in commentary. Leach, you like uh, Clint Robinson and Quintanilla before us. You've been to Portsy Beach so many times, you know what it's all about. And uh, like we said, the women, they're not thinking about the run leg at the moment, are they? They were, they were particularly looking out to sea to see what the surf is like. It, it was a very relaxed start, wasn't it? The gun went, none of the guys at the back really ran out too hard. They were just thinking, well, it's a day of just thinking, trying to sort of work out the best way of getting out the back and particularly negotiating the ski league, which, uh, which Kai spoke about earlier. So yeah, it's one of those days where you know, when the surf's around 10 foot, you, uh, there's a certain path to get out. There is a rip. We can see um, down the left-hand side, as you look at the screen, uh, that will occur for the guys to sort of grab hold of and try and get out. But even then, when the sets break, it even breaks over that rip. Yeah, well, I think it's very important to note what Kai said earlier in the interview was that the guys really respect that the women have had a red-hot go here today because no matter how good you are in the surf or what type of athlete you are, when a wave that big is about to drop on your head, it instills fear in you occasionally. Remember, everybody's been talking about this leachy since we, since we got down here this morning and saw this massive surf picking up. We all talk about Pihar Beach in New Zealand a few years ago when it was just gigantic, too big for the women to race. Now, I've got to say, I don't think today is too far off it. So the girls have got out there and had a crack in conditions where just a few years ago, they took a vote, and make a unanimous vote, to say it's too dangerous. Well, no, it was actually one girl put her hand up and said, I want to go out there. And that was Kirsty Holmes. And uh, but all the other girls, when we were there in the tent when they voted, uh, said no, we don't want to go out. I, look, today is big, but I might, must say that Pihar back a couple of years ago was stuff that would just give you fear for the rest of your life. It was breaking out a kilometre. Um, here is big. That was massive. Yeah, Pihar is also a very nasty looking beach too. It's got yeah. it's got cliffs right and left, and it's got black sand as well. Portsy, by the way, when you get down here, is one of the most picturesque spots you could ever find along the Australian coastline. The Mornington Peninsula National Park is just beautiful, but the beach itself is just nasty when it wants to be, and today it certainly is. Now, this is where the tactics come into play. So Wesberg has shot right off to the right hand side of screen. We're following him now. Remember, he's within a chance of winning the series here, so this could be make or break kind of stuff. If he can get out first, we're in with a hell of a chance. The rest of the guys have gone exactly the opposite direction, down to the left. Well, the, the other guys, as I said earlier, there's a rip to the left-hand side of the screen as you look at the screen. And, the, and 18 out of the 20 guys have gone to the left, Clint. Whereas, whereas Wes and someone else went to the right-hand side. Now, look, anything can happen, you can get out the back. But I would think that there is safety in numbers, and if 18 out of 20 are going down the left-hand side, there is a major reason for that. Yeah, definitely, Leach. I mean, that rip has definitely got to aid the propulsion of your energy to get you out the back quicker. Yet, the waves on the right-hand side of the course are breaking a little closer in, so I think Wes has maybe thought the fact that if I can get out there and get a bit of a break, I may be able to just sneak out before everyone else. This is the Bartercard board leg, 2.6 kilometres, but it will feel like a lifetime by the time they get through the break. Now, just for the people who watch this and who wonder why athletes go into a rip, whenever we go down to a beach, we're told, don't go near the rip. Just explain to them why you can in this kind of pool. OK, well, in an Ironman race, you want to get out the back as quick as you can, and a rip takes a rip is where a body of water is actually going out to sea and moves out past the break and then settles down. Now, on, on the bigger the surf, the bigger the rip. The water has to get back out because it's obviously coming in, so it needs to go back out and find this path back out to sea. That is a rip. The guys have run down something like five minutes worth to get into that rip, and uh, you can see Phil Clayton and Stephen King negotiating this whitewater here. They will get the drag out with that whitewater, whereas Wesberg has said there's a, there's a, a, um, a rock shelf down on the right-hand side. The waves are breaking closer in, as Clint said. As we can see right now, but uh, he's thinking he might sneak out that way. And it, I think it's a risk, and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, guys, it's definitely, I mean, as we can see what's happening here, Wes was literally paddling two or three minutes earlier than everyone else was in the water. So if this works for Wes, it could pretty much well set him up for the day. If it doesn't, it could be catastrophic. If you're watching, take a look at the size of this wave. Wes Berg is in big trouble. Can he get over the top? Yes. Just about surfs down the back of it. 
incredible. That was about 10 foot, that wave. This one is just as big. Does he have the pace to get through here? Make or break time? No! That is a big wave. That is the crunch zone. When you get caught in there, it's like getting a truck dropped on top of you. Well, I think Westberg knows that feeling right now because he's in big, big, big trouble over to the right. Over to the left, you've got guys like Stephen King and Phil Clayton that you saw trying to negotiate. They went pretty much straight down towards the left of the beach in front of the surf club and shot out that way. At the moment, you've got to say that the gamble hasn't paid off for Wes Berg and Greg Miller, of course, his partner from North Curl Curl. So they're all the way over there on the right-hand side. There's someone else in there as well. We'll try and find out who that is. Now they try and get underneath the white water. So poor old Wes Berg. He was two metres away from getting over there and getting out the back, wasn't he? And I can tell you, Matty, when you, you get to feel that, you put so much energy to get out there and that happens to you. If he gets that opportunity again, it's going to be very, very hard to generate that sort of energy to have another red hot crack at that. Shannon Eckstein from Surfers Paradise looks to be one of the guys who's made it out towards the back and through that break successfully. Kai Hurst in the yellow leader singlet is there as well. Oh. <laughs> that is huge. Oh, that's just got to hurt. He's come hurtling down the back. back as well. And there's someone else in there. Two boards, two bodies, somewhere caught in that white water. And the bad news is that they're going to get smashed again. That was Wesberg. That was Wes. One year at Portsea, that happened to me. I got sucked back over the falls with my board. That is an extremely frightening and painful experience when you hit the bottom. <laughs> I've I seen someone do it on a surf ski. <laughs> That's I even think, worse. I think you'll see it today. Our Vita Brutes results at the moment show our top five. Pullen, Clayton, King, Hurst and Eckstein. If you can pick a winner out of these 20, well, you, you, just, you should go and buy a lottery ticket straight away. I don't think Wes Berg will be buying any lottery tickets after going out on the right-hand side because he has been green. And it's stacking up. There's wave after wave. You look at the top of the screen. There's another one coming as we speak. He's just going, he's just getting collected and all his energy is being used up. And that's Kane Husner out there with him as well. So it's Greg Miller, Wes Berg and Kane Husner are the three guys that went out towards the right. These are the guys that went out towards the left. It all seems very easy that we can talk around about them going around the cairns out the back. But remember, they've just negotiated some of the biggest waves we've seen in a long time. And I think, guys, what is also important to notice here is Steve Pullen nearly went out in the middle of the total area where everyone chose to go out between the right and the left-hand end. Steve Pullen went out by himself in the middle. Now he's out there nearly leading the race. And some of the guys that went to the left have also followed him very closely out the back. So the guys that went to the right bad call unfortunately. Anti-clockwise they're going around these cans so it's quite bizarre when you're standing back at the beach to watch them. They're heading out towards a can that's way over to their right and they're running way over to their left to do it. And I'll show you just how much this surf can play around with your mind and your tactics. This is amazing. This is the first leg of a race. They're just going out through the break and the field would be spread out a kilometre now. I mean using an Ironman race the distance between the whole 20 is about 15-20 metres. We're talking a kilometre. Also, Phil Clayton, in the last five years of racing at uh, Portsy, he's had three wins and two second placings. So if anyone's going to be red hot today, as uh, Clint puts it, that's the guy that's going to be like that. He has an affinity with the beach. He goes very, very well in big surf. And he has that uncanny knack to pick the way to go, sometimes when you don't even think about it. Our rival profile there of Steve Pullen shows that he's an athlete and a carpenter. He'll need to build all sorts of... Well, guts here today within his own system to get over the former Australian Ironman champion. Has had a tough year as far as illness and injury goes. And right now, he's out there showing the way along with Phil Clayton. Phil Clayton, as you mentioned, Leachy, he just yeah, loves this beach, there. doesn't he? He loves big surf, trained by Trevor Hendy, so too is Stephen King. And of course, if you have anything to do with Trevor Hendy, you're going to spend a lot of time catching waves, aren't you? Well, and also, I mean, Clayton was winning here uh, prior to even being coached by Trev, so... He's, I mean, Trev obviously has helped him, but he's got this affinity with this beach and uh, he's, one, he's going to have the best record of anyone by the time his career ends uh, with Portsea Beach in particular. There's some big names right there. Clayton King, you've got Joshua Blair, Steve Pullen. You have got the cream of the crop right there, all battling it out in big surf. Does this get any better? This is Ironman heaven for you guys. I think it is, it is important to notice and people say, why do people go well in big surf all the time? Trevor was very, very good at it for a long time. When some people get in big surf, they are able to relax and really utilise their muscles to get them around the course as fast as they can and negotiate the waves. Other people tend to freeze up, forget about the whole course, they've got a race around, and their whole focus is just to get out the back. That's why Phil does well. He is quite a relaxed character. Plato looked as though he was calling someone on there, and Shannon Eckstein has come up with the call. It's takeoff time for Phil Clayton as well. <laughs> Oh, look at him. He's just enjoying that. Cuts across it on the right-hander. Eckstein just lays down. 
Phil Clayton knew that wave was going to sit up perfectly. He knew he had a conspirator there in Shannon Eckstein to catch it. And if you talk about someone who enjoys big surf and enjoys racing, that's him right there from the North Wollongong area. He races out of Surfers Paradise now, of course, but he's always got a purple cap with the white star and he's pretty recognisable as far as the grin goes on the face as well. Now, Matty, that was nearly the perfect way for a surf ski. It didn't actually break right till the end here. We see the white water breaking. And that's a great shot of Steve Pullen coming down with white water all over him. Yeah, poor old Steve. He's had enough trouble with back problems and breathing problems. <laughs> this isn't the beach to go. He just he virtually got pushed out on that board. Now Clayto gets up and does a bit of surfing. The mob loves it too. There's his dad, Chris Clayton, hands him the goggles. And he's laughing all the way to the sand as Phil Clayton and Shannon Eckstein come through the Connoisseur. Slips in the footmarks of Clayton. Now you've got Stephen King and Joshua Blair, it looks like, coming through. And there's Kai Hurst. So all of these guys, probably the biggest thing is that they've come through with their boards intact. And it's important not to get too smiley yet, I think, from any of the competitors' <laughs> point of view. They've got the hardest leg in the world to get out the back on, and that's the surf ski. So I'm sure we're in for some more excitement on that. I don't know about you, mate, but if I survive one leg out here, I'd have a grin for the rest of my life. So you've got Stephen King, Joshua Blair, and Steve Pullen now negotiating this. This is Leon Hay, takeoff time for him. Really working hard. Look at the rating going there, trying to push over the top of it, and he gets it, yes. Well, that's great surfing, great work of the craft, and Brett Tyre cuts in as well. Oh. well that's some great pictures there of the guys carving in front of that wave, that was great. Yeah, Leon Hay gets maximum speed because he was right in the drop-off zone there, and then all of a sudden Brett Tyre just came in on the right hand, on his left-hand side. And Brett Tyre enjoys a big wave as well, will be loving this. I think we'd have to make a statement here, guys, that even although the surf is still very big and certainly no way controllable hardly, it definitely has dropped a little or filled up a little since the ladies' race. It was just a lot more intense during the ladies' race, I think. Yeah, it was a lot nastier, wasn't it? It was a lot, uh, a lot more hurtful as far as what the wave would do to you. Now it just seems to be a little more helpful instead of hurtful. So Luke Richmond tries to come through. There's Brett Tyak still fighting it all the way to the sand. Talk about gravel rash. <laughs> He's happy. Oh, Brett, you're going to have to clear your rivals out of a few kilos of sand in there. So Brett Tyak gets up and running. Remember, the swim leg is next. This is Portsy B the final of the Uncle Toby Super Series for 2000, 2001. We're back soon. Hendy's in the middle of nowhere. He's looked behind. There's five on the next one. It's going to break right on Hendy. Right on him. It's broken over the top. And he's skied. It's gone 15 feet in the air. For the first time this season, but Trevor Hendy, the king, has come off his front. Tonight, the adventure is already wearing thin. I really am not happy here at all. Our Aussie man gets hacked off with communal living. I'm just sick of, just sick of it all. And a shocking event leaves the group completely devastated. Shipwreck 2, 7.30 tonight on 10. Kids need lots of energy. An independent review by leading health experts, published in the Medical Journal of Australia, states muesli bars are a recommended snack for children. And because Uncle Toby's muesli bars are full of oats, whole grains and real fruit, they're a great healthy snack. To find out more, see my new book, Fit Kids, based on the medical journal recommendations for keeping your kids fit, healthy and full of energy. With Aussie Mail's Aussie Shout Plan, you get unlimited internet hours for $24.95 a month. And we'll shout to the first three months free. That's why Steve Wars an Aussie male. Did you know we still owe $181,000 on our mortgage? There has got to be a better way. You can save more than you borrowed on your mortgage and pay it off in as little as a quarter of the time. That sounds like what we need. Home Sec Home Loans, 1300 134 600. Need new tyres and new wheels but have no cash? No worries. Bob has no deposit and no interest for 12 months. That's no deposit and no interest for 12 months from Bob. Bob who? The drivers love coming to Adelaide because it's all about V8s. It's a great atmosphere and it's a great support from the crowd. It's probably the most unforgiving circuit that uh, we race on. So there's a lot of concrete and uh, you've got to watch and be wary of what you're doing. It's the most satisfying to get right. OK, I haven't got it right the first two years. Book now for the best value three days of national motorsport in Australia. This time we're going to spoil their party, Adelaide. Party Adelaide. With Aussie Mail's Aussie Shout Plan, you get unlimited internet hours for $24.95 a month. And 
we'll shout you the first three months free. That's why Steve Waugh's an Aussie male. I'm Nikki Webster and these cheese zones are Jade and Ryan. From Friday the 23rd at 4pm until Sunday the 25th. The Kids Helpline are aiming to raise $500,000 in 50 hours through the Kids Helpline Radiothon. Show your support by calling the Optus Hotline on 1800 50 Kids. They say only children can see fairies. Why couldn't we see them? Tuesday, the charmed ones rediscover their innocence. You think this is bad? You should have been here for Frere Jaca. All new Charmed, 8.30 Tuesday on 10. Uh, you make up a lot of time, um, especially going through the surf on days like today. Um, if there's a big wave, you've got to be really aggressive but smart. You know, if you go out and try and punch into a, a six foot white water, you're just going to get hammered. So you've got to be smart, but at the same time, really aggressive. He looks like the mad professor, doesn't he? Brett Sayak talking about what happens here at Portsea Beach and how to do it as Phil Clayton heads out in the swim leg. So already the board has been completed. Kai Hurst will see how much he can make up in the swim. Shannon Eckstein is out there as well, and the waves continue to come down. Talk about the mad professor, you've got to be crazy to do this. Brett Hayek has copped a body full of porty sand. Oh, he'll be getting that out of the system forever. And this is Andrew Moselle. Look at the size of this wave. He paddles, he thinks about it, he's just about on top of it. That was wise. And common sense provided. Look how thick that is. That was wise. That's where he would have ended up. Look at that white water spraying across your television screen. That would have been Andrew Moselle. There's Trevor Hendy there enjoying these conditions like never before because he doesn't have to race in them. Out in front, Joshua Blair looks as though he's doing some pretty good swimming as well. It is the rival swim leg, 1.6 kilometres. Once again, anti-clockwise around the can. So most of the big names, except for Wes Berg, Wes Berg rather, at this stage, all the guys who are still in contention as far as the series goes are heading back out into mountainous seas. I can tell you, Kai Hurst has made up a huge amount of ground in that in this first half of the swim league. He was quite a considerable distance behind Phil coming in, maybe a minute. Now he's basically past them. Yeah, well, there he's he going is. Past them right now, just gonna, about to. Yeah, he's swimming fantastically. He's obviously gone out very well through the white water, and, uh, and he's actually not actually rating too hard at all. He's doing it quite easily. Phil Clayton looks as though he's doing it quite easily as well as Glenn Cowdery hits the beach and comes through. Run past the skis. You don't have to worry about them for the moment. As we take a look at the Vita Brits update, Clayton, Hurst, Eckstein, Blair and King and the sets continue to roll through. And guys, here's a little point for maybe future champions of the series. When Kai Hurst came in after winning the trial for his first year in the series, he finished 10th overall. He finished with a third and a fourth in that year. They were in his only two high placings. Shannon Eckstein so far has finished with a third at the last round. He's now coming third in this round and will finish higher than 10th if he does stay where he is today. So this could be a man of the future we're looking at. A champion in the making, you think? Quite possibly. Leach has tipped him as a short course specialist, but I'm tipping him as an all-round specialist. Well, it's no doubt you'd go against what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Brett Tyre being the mad professor. We've got the professor in the commentary box here, and he's done the numbers on Shannon Eckstein as Joshua Blair and Stephen King come around. And on the way out, these guys, I mean, talking about lung busting stuff isn't it you remember that white water that we've seen on the way through well these guys have got to get through that and one of the interesting points that John Crow brought up just uh, down on the beach while we were talking earlier was the Portsea Bob that you've developed here it's not your regulation duck dive you can't duck dive these waves you've got to get your body pencil pencil like and just sip on down and try and pop back you up just ease it down and, and what the guys are doing now when we've raced over the years Clint and I here at Portsea the back end of the actual race out the back around the cans is where you have a rest let your heart rate get back down again because you as soon as you get back into the wave area you it's very very hard it's impossible to, to hold one of those sets you want to catch one a little bit smaller let it push you in you can't hold them they're impossible to hold and you have to hold your breath for a very long time you get held under and you're trying to get your heart rate back down from about 180 beats a minute that's down to about 150 so that you don't drown and you go back in through the surf so that's what the guys are doing right now they're taking it easy they're trying to let the heart rate come back down and get ready for the ride home yeah. same yeah. too on the transition isn't it on the sand as well we saw it with the women's race they were just about half jogging i mean they weren't running at all were they transition normally means an area where you want to get in and get out of quickly but in these kind of races transition means catch your breath yeah that's right basically um straight after the ladies race when I went to congratulate Linda Halfwig I went up and said oh, look fantastic Everett you finished second good series and she said 
my chest is hurting and burning still so much because of the oxygen depth that she went through under the waves. If people don't realise what Portsea's all about, it's because the waves come from so far away and they come in onto a shelf which stands them up so quickly, but the, the bottom that they break on is very, very deep. You just can't go down and grab the sand. You're really in no man's land under there. And they're really, really thick waves. There's a lot of water that breaks. A six foot wave has the power of an eight or ten foot wave that's somewhere like Sydney or Queensland. So exactly. they're very, very thick, strong, powerful waves. The water's normally colder down here. You, you, you lose your breath when you go underwater. And the other thing which I've never liked about Portia is you get these big clumps of seaweed. And sometimes you're trying to get <laughs> under a ten foot uh, wave of foam and you hit the seaweed two foot down and can't go any further. Actually, <laughs> the seaweed at Manly was worrying you last week, Lexi, too, if I remember rightly. <laughs> Geez, you're hard to please, aren't you? You've got 12-foot waves, you've got perfect crowds, you've got pure sunshine, and you're still whinging about the seaweed out there. <laughs> we have got, aside from all that, we have got one hell of an Ironman race. This isn't just about, you know, the final. It is about survival. But aside from all that, we've got some top-class competitors right up the front here who can really make a race out of this, a hell of a race and a hell of a series finale. Well, Kai Hurst is getting ready to take off on one here. He's setting himself up, he's positioning himself Let's see what he can do here with this one. I think it might hold up. He won't be able to get there. He won't be able to get down it. But he's right in the position now with the sets coming through. And someone's on this. Oh, yeah, that's Phil great. just missed that wave. That would have taken him right over the falls. Well, he's flicked the goggles. He doesn't need them anymore. Well, it's about three more coming through, Matty. So they're sitting in a great position here. Well, Kai Hurst is going to go this. He's made the decision he's going to go it. Will he go over the top of it? Oh, oh that would have oh. been huge. That was smart. That, that was smart. Well, there's another one coming through. He made an early decision to start swimming for it, and it looked as though he wanted to take it. It just didn't have the power to kick him over, and I guess he is now thanking his blessings that he didn't do it. Look at that. That wave just creeps right Here up goes. now. First, he's got this one. Big time fall all the way down the front of that wave. Gets crushed by the white water. I just saw a hand then come up. <laughs> How did you see anything oh, in there aside there from the is. foam? He's there popped he up, yeah. For Kai Hurst to fall off a body surfing wave, it's a difficult wave to ride. Well, that's the first I've seen him miss all year. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. <laughs> Phil Clayton catches a broken wave, tries to milk as much out of it oh, as he can. Oh, that's great surfing, oh, Matty. Beautiful. That's, oh, look at the little butterfly stroke there to throw He was just board. ambering for air. You could see him trying to leap out of that wave together. He's done the big kick and thrown his arms forward another butterfly butterfly stroke to get himself some air and now he's going to hold that right through to the uh, inside part. That was a tremendously hard wave to catch, already broken, plenty of white water and he had to get his body out in front of it and like Leachy said, at one stage had the butterfly at the top of it to get his body out in front and head towards the sand but Phil Clayton as a result of that will get up first, yes he does. Ever present Chris right behind him urging him on his dad and now it's the ski leg to come, a little bit of a transition. Here you go, Shannon Eckstein coming through as well, so he also gets a bit of air time with the chest. There must be some backwash there to dry them up. Yeah, it seems to be as, as the water keeps sucking out off that little shelf that the beach has created, but this would be interesting to know what's going through Phil Clayton's mind at the moment. He's just finished the two legs that are damn tough to get out and get back, but he's about to do the hardest one of the day, and he's in front, and he certainly can do himself a lot of favours with the series by missing that first race in the year and having to pull out. So this would be uh, interesting to see what Phil's thinking at the moment. Talking about great body surfing, somehow Kai Hurst once again has just got a mess of a wave and made it look clean because he took it all the way for him just to push off the sand with his left hand and stand up and start running. So he's up about fourth because Shannon Eckstein is in. So Shannon Eckstein starts running. Kai Hurst starts running. The ski leg is still to come and that will mean carnage. Stay with us. A big sprint going on for second and third. You can see Hendy's past him and Leach is still going at him. And Trevor Hendy and Leach dives at the line. Guy Leach and both, both competitors are absolutely exhausted and Leach has sprinted and tried to hang off. And the two of them are just absolutely dead. Good afternoon, I'm Tracy Spicer. Making news on 10, Queensland's Labor landslide sends shockwaves across the country. The coalition suffering a massive voter backlash. A cross-border police pursuit ends in the death of a driver. Also, the fight to stop deadly plutonium entering the Tasman Sea. A cargo ship crammed with a thousand refugees runs aground on the French Riviera. And Tammy Van Wisser completes her swim. Details at five. 6.30 tonight. Go hard or go home. She can lead you into temptation. 5,000. But can she deliver you from evil? I'm going to have to get rid of you. Now, a record Australian TV jackpot is up for grabs. Greed, 6.30 tonight. 
It's easy to tell who has Vitabrits for breakfast. with an edge for life. Vita Brits, official breakfast cereal of the 2000 Australian Olympic team. Unless you get the right advice, making your money work for your future is difficult. Now you can have the insight, information and advice I have when it comes to investments. It's all in here, the Rifkin Report. Each week, the Rifkin Report gives you the latest market information, trends and investment advice to make your money work. Take the worry out of investing. Subscribe now and get me, Rene Rifkin, on your investment team. I got the hots. Got the hots for what's in the box with the dots? Then call now and we'll have your favourite Domino's pizza bubbling away in the oven in next to no time. Call now and get it while it's hot. Domino's. And it's a great hand onto the beach for a very worthy champion, Grant Kenny. In sport, my advantage over my competitors was fitness and strength. And now that I'm in business, my advantage is Bartercard. Bartercard has brought a whole world of new business opportunities to my door, opportunities that my competitors could never reach. And the great thing is, they've all got money to spend. So if you want a serious advantage over your competitors, join Bartercard now. Bartercard, we guarantee you new business. Phone now. 7.30 Tuesday. You know, I don't like seeing you here. I sure as hell don't want to see you at home. Thanks for your support. <laughs> Meet Becker's new neighbour. Bob stays, I move out. Show hands. A brand new episode of Becker. 7.30 Tuesday on 10. If I'm with a pack of guys, I'd like to sort of look around and see who they are. If it's Kai Hurst, I know he's going to be strong in the swim, so I've got to do things to prevent him getting away and then work on my, my skills and abilities and try to, you know, work theirs over pretty badly. The winner of race one in this series, Steve Pullen, talks about race tactics. Everybody else is talking about the big day here at Portsea Beach in Victoria. Our thanks, of course, to Parks Victoria for keeping this entire area so conserved and so beautiful. It's a hell of a beach and a hell of an area as well. Shannon Eckstein starts to think about his race plan on the ski leg. Already out there will be Phil Clayton as we take a look at what's ahead of them. It is the Aussie male ski leg, four kilometres. Once again, they have to work out towards the right-hand side of that can and then spin back in. Right now, they're going exactly the opposite way. Well, Phil Clayton is anyway. He's going out towards the left. He's paddling across the beach here. He needs to straighten out here because the white water's going to hit him. As you see, Kai Hurst getting ready to go out. But Phil's going right down to that rip on the left-hand side as we look at the screen as he goes over two white waters. And he's going to try and sit there and wait in between the two breaks and try to sneak out through the set. Well, poor old Shannon Eckstein has lost his ski just as he got into the shore there. So he basically hasn't got out into the danger zone yet. And already one of those tiny little shore breaks is chewed him up and spat him out so he has to start again. Clayton almost lost his paddle. No, just trying to get his balance with one hand instead. Hey guys, the interesting thing is going to be, see, going to, be to see if the guys don't go over backwards here because they're going out with the current yet as soon as the power of the wave hits you it drives the tail of the ski into the water. And for some of the guys it could prove very, very difficult because once they go over your head you can't hang on to them anymore. The ski straps don't hang in your feet anymore, so it's very, very difficult to hang on to This is a much different leg compared to swimming or, or board pounding. Swimming, you can go under the water and you can get out depending on whatever the surf is. On a board, you can always roll and get under the wave and hang on, even though it drags you back, you don't lose your craft, or you usually don't. But on a surf ski, with this sort of surf, it's a matter of just trying to sit there and wait, as Phil's trying to do here, he's trying to jump the white water on the inside of the brake, sit in that middle area where it's not too dangerous and then time to get out through the set so that's it's a game of chess at the moment and the problem is the longer he sits there the more guys are going to be coming at him from the back of the field and all we've seen today is that the sets are relentless normally you get a little bit of a breather in between your normal sets but not here not today not at Port that Beach. is huge because look at that this is what he's going to have to get over let's see how he does it tries to punch the front of the ski up then hold his balance while he's done that perfectly. Well, the wave actually dropped down. Like, had he been 20 metres in front of that, he would have 
across the ski, but where he's sitting at the moment, the white water really drops off and it gives him a chance to jump the uh, the foam. So Kai Hurst has skipped past Shannon Eckstein as Clado, can he hold on to that? Oh, oh no! Slipped off. There was hang literally on, that much water underneath the bottom. He needs to hang on to that. The There's another white water coming for sure. He's got back on very quickly. That's good. He good just work. looks so calm though, doesn't he? There's no sign of panic in Phil Clayton when he's on a ski. He looks comfortable, he still looks relaxed, and remember that he's just got metres upon oh, metres of white water man, doing that to him time and time oh, Where's again. his paddle? He's going to have to get his paddle. All right, all right. It's quite amazing to see so many guys within the top five or six in this race, yet they're walking down to the water with their ski. There is definitely... Oh, oh that's oh. great surf skills from Kai. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Just went to the, the tail went in and it just popped up and he nearly got sucked back over the wave again. Well, that'll give you some idea of the size of these waves as well. These skis are, what, six metres long? Yep, just under yep. six metres. Just meters, under yep. six metres long. So you'll see by the time they get out to the back, to the big oh, stuff... Oh, this is not good. Well, there you go. There's about four or five metres worth of white water there. Now, oh, that's reverse. Phil Clayton has just found reverse on a surf ski, and I don't think he's real happy about it, but at least he's still sitting oh, on it. He's happy to just have the ski in the board, I think. Here he comes again. This is the power that you were talking about, Clint. He gets up over it. He keeps his balance. Now there's nothing you can do. you just got to go on for the right. I think that was a perfect example of what the modern-day ski is all about. The old ones and the years ago used to be just too flat. Now the bow lifter that's at the very front of the ski scoops it up over the wave. But literally, there's that body still sitting there that's going to get hit all the time. And that was a perfect example of just what happens. Leon Hay now trying to do exactly what Joshua Blair and Kai Hurst and Phil Clayton and Shannon Eckstein are all trying to do. Well, Kai Hurst has come off. So where's his ski? He's got his paddle. That's a very important part of the equation. Now, Joshua Blair continues to pump out. Well, there it is. There's the ski. Now, where's Kai Hurst? Well, he's going to lose it back to the beach here with the white water. Oh, he certainly is. Now, he can body surf back in, but the problem is that his uh, craft is going to beat him there. Was that Kai Hurst trying to paddle himself back I in I think there? it was. I think it was. <laughs> trying to paddle himself through the swimming I've seen section. everything. I have now seen everything. Yeah, I've what seen is that? that? What is that? <laughs> you don't do it like that. <laughs> I've seen that guy catch freakish waves. He doesn't need a paddle to catch oh, waves so like that. funny. That's hilarious. Get a little bit of help from a body surfer. Nah, he let go of it. Kai actually told the yeah. guy to let go of it because he knew that uh, that was impeding, but he, he did the right thing there. And as I said, the ski was always going to go back to the beach because you can't swim fast enough with your paddle in your hand. <laughs> you can't paddle a ski without the paddle. And so you, well, and you can't, you can't, can't let go of the paddle. That's nah, well, it's all important. And you it? can't paddle yourself fast enough back that way. Well, he's doing all right, though. He's doing all right. God, guys, for the third time this year, um, Josh Blair is certainly having trouble with the brake on his ski. He's copped a bit of a pounding this year on the ski. Well, to be, to be fair on him today, Clint, yep. it's not like it's manly. No. <laughs> well, some of the days that he had not some trouble. And it's not Everyone like has trouble today. Yeah, sure. Everyone has trouble. So Kai Hurst now has to start all over again. Here goes Phil Clayton. want to see how far he's made it out. He's still in all that white water, all that ugly stuff. And that means trouble because that's where the waves are breaking. Another big one picks up as Stephen King tries to just look ahead. You pick up his rating there, kick his kick his back towards the back of his ski, get his balance right and get over. Oh, here we go. Here now we go. they're in the wave zone. Look at what's behind this one. Phil Clayton, what does he do here? Well, it's broken already, so he can't get over it. There's no way in the world you can get over this. Well, has it just pulled off enough? I think he thinks there's not one behind this wave. He's going to back himself in on this wave and maybe get out in green water behind it. So yeah. he wouldn't have gone like he did then unless he thought there was going to be a gap. Yeah, there's still a little bit of a hesitation in his strokes. It looks like he's just not sure. No, I think I think really he's go. out. I think he's out, Clint. I think he's backed himself in. Yeah. That was the last wave of the set. Well, the head's down. Now you can see that. Look at the look at the ski. Like look at the way it's sitting up. Now it's all down. Now it's back down the business. Well, that like was really seen. clever by him. He, he made a decision. He saw I can see one more bump coming in the horizon and I don't think there's anything else he's uh -oh. taking a shot at it. Steve Pullen gets over that. Looks like he's seen Phil go and he's gone, it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Brett's high. Bronco rides over the back of that one as Kane Husner hits the sand running, he's still got the sand, there's people going left, right and centre. Guys finishing legs and starting other ones, it's just like the women's race where we had the legs into crossing. Now Phil Clayton is definitely out the back. You can tell by the clear water, but look at the walls of water that are going on over his left shoulder. The thing about that is that it's going to hit the guys behind him, a la these guys. Steve King goes over, Leon Hay is behind him. Well, he's really raiding, he thinks he's out. He thinks he's half a chance to get out here. Oh, there's a few more to go <laughs> well, on I don't know, yet. I think he thinks he's out. Yeah, he's out all right. Well, he's it hasn't out. picked up too much for him, so he's got a comfy little run out there. And out the back, Phil Clayton probably knows that all he has to do is round this can and then get 
whatever he can back in because he doesn't need the craft on the way back in. The classic mental scenario in this game is when you're trying to get out, all you're thinking about is trying to get out. Once you get out the back of his 10 foot, you think, oh no, I've got to get in there. <laughs> so it all changes, you're like, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> and the hard part is when you're on a ski, if a guy gets out reasonably close to you, you come down. Oh, oh Brett Tyak! Oh, oh, that was amazing! <laughs> Brett Tyak takes a 5.7 metre ski and sends it sailing over the back of a wave. So it just gives you some idea of how, front, how big the front of the wave was. He had enough to surf it down. Look at this, right at the crunch point. That's enormous. I can tell you what, That's his enormous. heart was in his mouth. <laughs> His that heart was, was in his mouth, and if he had have gone backwards, his ski would have been down his mouth as well. <laughs> or somewhere else. Thankfully, Brett Tyak <laughs> managed to make it out the back. And as far as, well, finishing this race, all you've basically got to do is get out the back. Well, as we were saying before, by coming in, if you come in and lose your ski out the back and you've got to try and swim in through all that white water, someone gets out reasonably close to you and picks a wave and takes it to the beach. It's literally two or three minutes difference. So for Phil, he hasn't won the race yet. Sure, he's out but he has got to get that ski, which is a heck of a long, very hard to control piece of equipment in these conditions back in. In this size surf, over the last 12 years, we've had about three occasions, and this is probably the fourth occasion we've had to surf anything like this. And what you find in the ski leg is that half the field actually don't get in with the ski. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see out of the front guys who actually gets the ski into the beach. I mean, the whole win today could be based on the fact that these guys having to swim in in the actual wave area and try to get to the line first, not but, with the ski. And by the way, Wesberg hasn't lost his cap. That's actually, well, he has has lost his cap, but that's actually his hand colour. So it's alright. Oh, Kane Husner. Crunch. A big 360 the wrong way from Kane Husner. Wartsy is absolutely pounding. Make sure you stay with us. He will become the eighth person ever to win a race in the six year history of the series. And Philip Baden, the 18 year old from North Wollongong Surf Club, wins the final round of the Uncle Toby Super Series. And listen to the crowd. Perhaps the biggest crowd we've ever had at one of these races. And Clayton has done it, and he's beaten his hero, Trevor Hendy. Hi, my name's Rove. I'm 27, Aquarian, cusp. I like trying new things. Did it work? Yeah. I like walks in the rain. I'm great with kids. I don't want any trouble, OK? And I love animals. I'd like to think I'm open-minded. Can lesbians adopt dogs? But I'm interested in finding out about you. So, my place or yours? Make a date with Rove, 9.30 Tuesday on 10. And there's a great hand onto the beach for a very worthy champion, Grant Kenny. In sport, my advantage over my competitors was fitness and strength. And now that I'm in business, my advantage is barter card. Bartercard has brought a whole world of new business opportunities to my door, opportunities that my competitors could never reach. And the great thing is, they've all got money to spend. So if you want a serious advantage over your competitors, join Bartercard now. Bartercard, we guarantee you new business. Phone now. The Parramatta Supercross goes indoors for the first time with Supercross Masters for the Australian title, plus monster trucks, tropical thunder and lunatic. Be at the Sydney Superdome Saturday, Feb 24. See all the factory teams with all the guns. There's Anderson, Taylor, Porter, Metcalf and Carroll. Plus the awesome expression session and the unbelievable monster trucks too. Great seat for only 30 bucks. Say 15 on the family ticket. That's Supercross Masters one night only Sydney Superdome Saturday, Feb 24. Book a ticket tick now. Are you expecting more from a mobile phone deal? You'll get a deal one better at your one phone store. Pick up a Nokia 3210 or the Ericsson T28 on a $15 plan and receive $15 a month in free calls. Or the compact Nokia 8210 on the $29 plan. This is one of Australia's most popular mobiles. And with $29 worth of free calls each month, it's a great buy. All of these great deals are one better at one phone because you get a free leather case, car charger and portable hands-free. Plus, one phone gives you free time 24-7. Yes, you can talk to any other OneTel next generation customer absolutely free for the first 12 months. The one phone reply now is also free for your first month. This is not just an answering machine, it's a complete messaging service. And send text with SMS messages for your first month free of charge. Connect on any of these great plans and receive a free Impulse Airlines flight return to Brisbane or Melbourne. Don't just bring your interstate friends, let Impulse take you there. Free interstate flights for a limited time only at one phone. Visit a one phone dealer network store in your area.
Welcome back to Porty Beach. The Uncle Toby Super Series continues, and this is our race leader for the final. Oh, look at this little cushy one. Wow. <laughs> hey, how would you pick something up that It might not be cushy when it doubles up in a second, though, Clint. I'm sure he won't get to the beach that easy. <laughs> There's another one behind him. He's going to oh. catch up. The madness is behind him currently, oh. and I don't know if he knows it. He knows it now. Clayton gets rid of the paddle and just gives up. Oh. Almost clean up a competitor they who's did. going back out. Well, it, I think they just managed to duck. The question is, where is Phil Clayton? There he is. So Phil Clayton had just had to bail out before it was too late. He doesn't have to worry about the paddle anymore. Look at this. A la Trevor Hendy a few years back when the white water just sucked up and said, you're gone. That was a much heavier wave, though. It was really, really powerful. And he had the actual ski tipped sideways slightly. So he had no chance there. Well, that didn't turn out to be the cushy little wave we thought he got on. <laughs> I think Phil thought it was cushy until he heard this monstrosity come behind him. Now Shannon Eckstein is just doing a fantastic job. That is a is a competitor of the future, there's no question. Stephen King, now the rain this is This would be for the win, Matty. This would be for the win for the race, because Phil Clayton's oh, in the water he's, swimming. He's oh. lost it. He's lost it. Well, you're right, he's gone too. It slewed over to his left. He tried to hold it as much as possible, and then there's got to be a point where you just bail out. <laughs> well, that's well, the well, point well. right there. Oh. Talk about the point. He's Look at time. He, has he held on to that? He's body he's, surfing. He's not hanging out. He's body surfing. That is incredible. He's now on the ski now. He went over the ski and passed it. Oh, <laughs> great stuff. That's, that's the fantastic. best thing I've seen today. That is incredible. That is pure handy like to do that. something like that was just incredible. Got rid of the ski, body surfed the wave, managed to double over the front of the ski that was still in front of him and somehow continue to race. But back on the sand now, there's been way too much happening and Philip Clayton will come in and survive this day. Kane Houston gets a short dumper, but Phil Clayton has got a big smile. This is the fourth time that he's won here at Portsea Beach. You little beauty! Plato's done it. He wins the final race of this series, and now it all comes down to points as to where Kai Hurst will finish. Stephen King comes across. His training partner for up at Surface Paradise. King second, Clayton first. Let's see who comes in third. Also from Surface Paradise, Shannon Eckstein. Well, congratulations to you, Shannon. Freakish stuff from him today, the youngster who won the trial to get in this thing in the first place. Now Leon Hay tries to negotiate what many before him haven't been able to do. And well, you join an elite group today, Leon, because you're not alone there. I haven't seen someone come in on the ski yet. Uh, as I said, it'd be, it'd be very surprising if someone does. There's Drew Cancross. I don't think I've, all I've seen is skis come in and paddles come in. If you're wandering down Portsea Beach in the next week, you'll probably find a few spare paddles. Here comes Brett Tyak. So this could be a top four, it is, a top four finish for Brett Tyak, who will now reconsider, I'm sure, plans of retirement. But here comes Kai Hurst, pulling in a beautiful wave to finish off the series. No wonder Brett Tyak's happy. The final four come across, the first four rather, come across. Steve Pullen will come in also in the top five, and Kai Hurst, is holding on for Super Series survival. He goes as well. Gee, when, when they fall off on the downward side of the wave and the ski comes over them, that's quite dangerous to get a belt in the back and of And they're head. willing to do that to try to catch the wave to get themselves in because <laughs> he right. wants to win the series. He doesn't care whether he cops the ski in the back of the head. Well, that's right. I mean, like the ladies' point score before this race, there was nowhere near as much between the men, so it's going to be close. Well, that's five through now. So you've got Philip Clayton, our winner. We don't have, apart from Stephen King, we don't have any other title contenders. Now, well, Kai Hurst has already tried to paddle a ski without a ski. Now he's trying to paddle a ski without a paddle. paddle. It doesn't make sense, Hurst. Whatever you do, he'll just get, get, he'll the, get the swell as well. Talk about the jack of all trades. This is incredible. We've seen guys just do all sorts of things here today, just in any way they can to get to the beach. Now this, he's in a bit is, of trouble. <laughs> Oh, well, I won't bother taking a ski and I might body surf it in because that's what I do. I'm Kai Hurst and I'm damn good at what I do. Leon Hay gets up. So that'll be sixth position. So if Kai Hurst can finish seventh, I'm absolutely certain that he will win the Uncle Toby Super Series. And yes, he will. And yes, he will finish seventh. He still needs to put in a bit of a sprint. Just looks behind him and says, thank goodness, that's out of the way. That ski looked like it wanted to still jump on his back. <laughs> let him go. Well, that's he's had sure. enough trouble with it. I think he should just throw it out at the end of this series. Get a new one at the, at the start of next series. Oh, great, great champion. But, I mean, he was put to all tests early in this year. It's a fantastic result. Well, he might not have won this race, this final race of this series, but he has reason to celebrate. And what a way to do it in front of a big crowd in big waves. Pye Hurst 
has done it one more time. The Uncle Toby Super Series champion for the third time running. A triple treat from this young man with a gigantic future and a huge pool of talent. He's the big fish, all right. And he celebrates with some guys from up there in Queensland who certainly know what it's all about today. Joshua Blair is still out the back trying to now think about coming back here. As far as the series goes, it's gone for Joshua Blair. Reese Drury also has the big waves ahead of him. Well, Bill, how was that? Uh, that was unbelievable. The waves were just so big. In the first board leg, I was real lucky. Steve King and I went over uh, probably the furthest to everyone. And uh, we snuck out. And I think from the first leg on, it, it really dictated the whole race. You really look like you're enjoying yourself out there too. No, oh, how can you not? The, the sun's out, the surf's absolutely massive. It was just, it was a case of survival out there and uh, whoever picked the right alley really, really won it. I'll tell you what, he might be having fun because he's finished. The other guys are still going and look what's ahead of him. Wes Berg has already had his time with the waves here and it looks as though he's going to go back and try and punch him out again. The waves, I think, won. Where's nil at the moment? <laughs> Oh, I tell you, someone's taken off on a little bit of a drop here if they come down this. Yeah, Drew Cancross. Well, he fought the hardest part of that wave now. He's still he coming down. He knows he's in trouble. <laughs> he knows he's in trouble. Yeah, he put his hand up to say, I think he just said what Wes Berg should have said at the start. You win. That's sacrifice. That's the sacrifice to loot. Hang on a second. He has held this wave. Oh. Now, if he can hold it all the way through here, that's definitely the wave of the day. He's got it. Oh, he's looking down at the nose. Yes. <laughs> Enough time to take one hand off the paddle Fantastic. and relax. Fantastic. That's great stuff from a young guy. That's really good ski control. Well, excuse us, Drew, for counting you out because everyone in front of you has been smashed and you're not out of it yet. Not that we want to see you go. It's just oh, the oil you've got. Well, there you go. It's just that that's the way it is today. <laughs> it's inevitable. It's oh, he's get... on the shore anyway. <laughs> he was the shore dump. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. Flick he's the paddle. You don't need that anymore. Drew Cancross finishes what has been an epic day here at Portsea Beach. I tell you what, I've seen some things today oh, that, that I haven't is... seen oh, in this... all these years of Uncle Toby, Steve Pullen, or is it Kane Huesner? This is madness. That is madness, all right. That's Kane Huesner coming down a gigantic wave. Oh, all the way back. Oh, no. oh. Now he's trouble. Now he's in big trouble. Watch the ski go. The ski's gone. Kane huesner has gone. Has he got the paddle? Well, he doesn't need it anymore. It doesn't matter, Matty. Oh. That, that is quite amazing. He just went for it. That's what happens when you get to the end of the race and you think, oh, look, I can't beat this surf anymore. Oh, I'm just going to take the drop and, and take the consequence. And also, he's at the back of the field. He thinks, what the hell? But I'll, guys, I'll have a go and thrill the crowd. But, guys, what you're going to notice here is he is fortunate in some way that it's broken hard behind him now and it actually spits him. You'll see him pop out again. So he's gone through the worst break and he actually popped out again. So he really lost the first two major impacts. It did, and it didn't break top to bottom off the lip. It actually broke halfway down, then rolled under his ski. So it didn't actually smash him. No. Luke Richmond now. Maybe it's his turn. Got bad news for you, Luke. It's might be all right, man. Everyone in front of you. Well, he's gone, <laughs> Leach. Maybe not. Might be all right, guy, Leach. Come on, Leach. You've seen about 19 <laughs> haven't happened oh, already. No. Here comes Wesberg, still enjoying his day. Wesberg's going to have his highest overall place finish. Maybe not today as far as the race goes, but definitely overall. And I think also he knows that right now is time to paddle. You've already claimed my mate Drew Pancross on the way in. You're not getting me, Portsy, he says. And oh, this he's... looks like a nice little wave too. He's ridden this oh, beautiful. It'll, it'll suck up on the shore here. Wait for it. This is the shore dump coming in. He's Hang getting on. ready to die. <laughs> Head down. Paddles he goes. There he goes. Over he goes. No, has he held it? Oh. <laughs> There we go, boys. Our record's 100%. <laughs> oh, we're so cocky up here. Oh, there's one winner at this beach today, and it's the beach itself, because Portsy Beach has claimed everything. The two faces of Wes Berg. One, where he goes out with the blue side and says, oh, I love this. The other side is the, probably the peroxided side. It comes in and gets smashed on the way through. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Poor old Wes Berg has had a hell of a day. He took a gamble at the start of this race, and it didn't pay off. But overall, Wesberg will finish high up in the series. Definite top three. The waves continue to roll in as our competitors continue to push out. This is Greg Miller from North Curl Curl. So Greg Miller is now in that zone. Oh, I, you get scared just watching these guys because we know what's going to happen. And I, feel, they don't yet. I feel sorry for him. Oh, goodness me. This is going to be quite a late takeoff, oh, he's, too. He's taken, look at the oh. air in front of his ski and the bottom oh, of the front. <laughs> the ski snapped in half. The front, the front of the front. ski came off. It certainly did, it just snapped. That's the reason why he didn't get crunched like the rest oh, of them. Look, look at that. that. 
he must that must have happened on the way out because it looked like look the water is in the back of the ski that's what's holding it up going down yeah. the wave because the nose was already gone coming down the wave that's I'd say that's happened on the way out so he's been trying to paddle that thing full of water around the course yeah, good luck to him no wonder it was so hard he's tried to come in without a bumper bar that wasn't there to push the water away <laughs> Forget the bumper bars, you need 20 foot bull bars. <laughs> 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 Simon Martin. If anyone can catch a wave here, Simon can do it. Well, he's certainly in the right spot at the right time now. Simon Martin negotiates, pounding Portsea Beach. We'll come Leader, back and wrap uh, it all up uh, right after this. Good afternoon, I'm Tracy Spicer. Coming up on 10 News, Labor's landslide win in Queensland sends shockwaves through the federal coalition. A cross-border police pursuit ends in the death of a driver. Also, growing condemnation of the Baghdad bombings. A freighter packed with a thousand refugees runs aground on the French Riviera and environmentalists take to the sea to stop a plutonium shipment entering the Tasman. Details shortly. Tonight, the adventure is already wearing thin. I really am not happy here at all. How Aussie man gets hacked off with communal living. I'm just sick of, just sick of it all. And a shocking event leaves the group completely devastated. Shipwreck 2, 7.30 tonight on 10. And it's a great hand onto the beach for a very worthy champion, Grant Kenny. In sport, my advantage over my competitors was fitness and strength. And now that I'm in business, my advantage is barter card. Barter Card has brought a whole world of new business opportunities to my door, opportunities that my competitors could never reach. And the great thing is, they've all got money to spend. So if you want a serious advantage over your competitors, join Barter Card now. Barter Card, we guarantee you new business. Phone now. Feast your eyes on this. My new sweet chili twister. Two tender pieces of breast filler chicken, lettuce, tomato, mayo, and a new sweet chili sauce. Chicken with a twist. Just keeps getting sweeter. Drivers love coming to Adelaide because it's all about V8s. It's a great atmosphere and it's a great support from the crowd. It's probably the most unforgiving circuit that uh, we race on. So uh, there's a lot of concrete and uh, you've got to watch and be wary of what you're doing. It's the most satisfying to get right. Okay, Holden got it right the first two years. Book now for the best value three days of national motorsport in Australia. This time we're going to spoil their party, Adelaide. Party Adelaide. With Aussie Mail's Aussie Shout Plan, you get unlimited internet hours for $24.95 a month. And we'll shout you the first three months free. That's why Steve Wars on Aussie Mail. Experience nature's dark side, up close and personal. Enix is armed with a weapon out of Hollywood science fiction. The stunning new series that takes you where no others dare. Sandra Sully presents Predators, 7.30 Monday. Wrapping up one hell of a day here at Portsea Beach. The Barter Card race results. Clayton, King, Eckstein, Tyre can pull on your top five and Kai You just have to get out there, be smart, hold your breath and uh, you know, pray to God and cross your fingers that everything went your right way. And you know, I did. I finished in the top seven, top eight, and uh, you know, I got the series and, and that was my goal. My goal wasn't to get out there and win. Well, it was sort of, but uh, you know, my goal was to finish this series on top again. And you know, I've done that, so I'm, I'm very happy. Well, he did what he had to do. Look at the crowd here building up because we're about to crown Kai Hurst, the overall series winner. Our thanks to Guy Leach in commentary down on the sand, Cliff Robinson. Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for coming down to round five of the Uncle Toby Super Series. It's certainly the finale this year and what a way we've gone out on. It's fantastic surf and the race has provided plenty of thrills and spills, especially in the ladies. And with the men's race with Kai coming over backwards, literally in the last leg, could have lost the series and only won by a very narrow margin. So it's certainly been a fantastic series. But without dragging everybody out too long, I'd like to introduce the winners. A third in the ladies is Sarah Kennedy. The 
second is Penny Turner. First of all, who can forget it? Four out of five. She was hoping for five out of five, but the magical Reen Corbett. Well, well, Reen, it was a uh, it was a tough day today. You've got another trophy here to take take away. The ladies have got the biggest trophy here today, so certainly standing in force, the ladies at Portsea today. Well, Reen, just before we go, we've got to ask you. It was certainly a tough day. You penetrated that surf for about 25 minutes of that 38 minute race trying to get out on the board. How'd you feel? It felt a lot longer than that. Um, yeah, it was really tough out there. I mean, you couldn't actually just attack it. You just had to sit back and conserve your energy. So when there was a lull, you could, you know, you had a bit of energy up your sleeve. But um, yeah, it was definitely tough. And when I made it out there on the board, I was so relieved. Yeah, well, congratulations. Fantastic race. Well done. Give her a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Well, for the men. What a fantastic series. It jolted between five guys in the last two races and who knew who was going to win today. But eventually, third place, Wes Berg. And second place, Stephen King. series in a row, the man, Kai Hurst. <laughs> well Kai, third time around mate, you must have had your heart in your mouth when your ski went over your head and went back to the beach. Yeah definitely, you know, I was just pop popping through those waves and uh, you know, one of the sets came through and I was facing this pretty big wall of white water and, uh, you know, I was in the middle of whether, whether I should roll it or just try and pop it and, um, you know, I went for the second option, I tried to pop it and, and lost my skin. You know, my heart was beating a little bit faster than normal and, uh, you know, pretty cool and calm and uh, some of the guys told me to run up the beach, so I ran up the beach, jumped straight in the rib and got straight out and, uh, you know, counted the guys out the back and I think I was in seventh place and, uh, you know, I started to smile, so it was good, good feeling. Yeah, well, mate, you started off the series with a pretty tough end of the deal. You didn't quite get through that first survival also when we went to uh, Coolangatta Beach, but you've come on extremely strong at the end, and that's what a champion has to do. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. You know, I sort of started a little bit sketchy this year. I had, had a big big start to the year with the 5km open water worlds over in Hawaii, and, uh, you know, a lot of my focus was on that. And uh, coming back, I think I had two weeks of preparation to get ready for the first race. So, Raced all right in the first one, a little bit disappointed with the second one, but, uh, you know, started to find ground again and uh, wound up for the last three. Yeah, well, congratulations, mate. Fantastic series. And everyone, can you put the hands together for all the competitors today for the last round of this year's series? Well, that is what you call a perfect portsy ending to the 12th year of the Uncle Toby Super Series. And Francis, G, we had some fun all throughout the year, but today we've never seen anything quite like it. Oh, it was just awesome. These are the best iron men and iron women in the world, and we rarely see them tested like this. I said to you at the top of the show, you'll find out this afternoon why they call them iron men and iron women. Today was meant to be the final, the endurance. It was survival in the end, wasn't it? It certainly was, and it just goes to show the ones that really come through in the end. You know, in the men's race, the top four competitors were all coached by, guess who? Trevor Hendy. Trevor Hendy, the man who, of course, made Portsea Beach his own, but now Phil Clay Clayton's had a crack at that. Plato has now won here four times in six years. Overall, though, the series goes to Kai Hurst, the first man since Trevor, of course, to win it three consecutive times, and Reen Corbett winning four out of five races to claim the women's title, her third title overall as well. Well, that wraps up a wonderful year of the Uncle Toby Super Series. We've had some great support from crowds, from the media, and, of course, from you at home. On behalf of Francis McDonald, our entire production and commentary team, I'm Matthew White saying goodbye from Portsea Beach.